Remy stared at me from across the room, while he sat in Paris with the ice cream beautifully lit behind him. And his beady little eyes started looking into mine. I sat in the dusty old classroom, ready to clean my heart out. My art teacher had said a rag tweed pink tissue box on the table and asked me to draw it. I never drew a three dimensional object before. I was nervous but excited. Then I began to draw. When I started to draw this object, I realized that every different angle and every different way you looked at it, the box appeared different. And that's what really got me thinking about the different perspectives of life. Now, what, when I look at the box, every time it, it looked uh, different and then you look at the And this is what we call the art. Now, everything you see around us is deviated towards the art. The only answer is art. Does art deviate life, or does life deviate art? Think about that for a few moments. Well, Oscar Wilde wrote that. Life imitates art far more than art imitates life. And it's not life's mere result, or it's not its aim to, I mean, it is its aim to find expression, but it's through art itself. Now, let me give you an example. Fog has been around for centuries, but no one has really noticed the beauty or the wonder of fog. But artists and authors have written about it, and that's what makes us look at how beautiful it actually is. Fog is just, it's just water vapor. But you know, when artists and authors and poets write about it, they, they look at it as beautiful white sheets of mist. And art has basically invented a way for us to look at nature. We associate flowers with gentleness and mountains with strength. And it's all because of the way that they have chose to interpret and perceive things and describe them to us. Well, let me ask, give, you a, give you another example. It's all a matter of perspective, right? So, another example that Alva Supramanda has given was why the cow crossed the road. It's a rather simple situation, and different people perceive the same question differently. What do you guys think? Well, this question asked to a school teacher would say, to get to the other side. Harry Potter would have said, for the greater good. <laughs> Martin Luther King would have said, I had to work where all the cows really cross the road without having to go to the the question. <laughs> same thing with Einstein. We asked him, he would have said, no matter whether the cow crosses the road or the road underneath the cow, it all kind of make a reference. And he would have, he would have just said, Asking this question is to deny his own existence at that time. That's important. That is how important that really is. Well, let's talk about perspective of art. The beauty of art lies in its ability for us to perceive and change the way we look at things around the world and apply change for change that is required. Now, art has the power to make me feel. Art has the power to make you feel loved, to find yourself as thinking about your food, to find yourself. Most importantly, it has the power to heal. It gives you a medium for expression. It allows you to, allows you to recover from trauma and recuperate from trauma with other people. So, art has and gives you the strength to walk out of the world and Free yourself. And this isn't be done by me. It can be done by drawing, singing, dancing, anything that it comes to dress up. So expression. Now artists all have this tendency to blur the lines between reality and fantasy. Now when they do this, they usually get stuck up with it. And you know, it could be the guy that keeps their insanity. But I don't think it's that insanity that keeps them sane. And when they get you look back into reality, they start to create this path where they can, you know, create or invent what you imagine. For example, um, before that smart came into existence, the idea of having a mobile phone where you were responding to the human touch or where you have multiple images was crazy. 
because that and then they're going to use going to sort of communication. But look at the big package created, right? It's huge, tremendous. Now, because of the way I looked at the situation or the way I perceived the situation, I was able to create a positive impact to an informal community. And that comes, you know, by looking at situations, putting on different benefits. And this was when we taught our digital image, to help to heal and self express. And now the other way we can perceive different things is like this example. Well, um, let me tell you this folk tale. It's about a group of blind men, and an elephant comes into town. And they don't, they are, they're not aware about the shape or form of the object. And out of curiosity, they went to inspect it. You don't like touch because that's the way they're able to. And so they did. One blind man went to the trunk and he said, um, it's a long, it feels like a long and thick snake. Another who, who experienced his leg said it was a tree-like pillow. One who saw his, one who uh, touched his tail said it's this rope-like structure. Another one who was placed in front of his ear said that it was a it was this large, strange plant. Another one who was placed in front of the body just said, oh, well, this feels like a wall. And in this story, it has several versions. And in most of them, it ends with them arguing about who is right, who, who best interpreted the situation. But in the Hindu version, all of them come to mutual understanding where they saw and experienced different parts of the whole picture. And that's really the lesson here, right? So all of them, they just ask the right questions, they listen, they were curious. And that's, what, that's what's really important, to see the bigger picture, even though they're blind. That's what we have to do. And so what we did was apply the same logic into creating positive impact from the the world. So last time I was here, I was a part of Thai entrepreneurship, where we created a product called the Nurture Bar. And this nutrition bar basically aims at reducing infant and mother mortality to pregnant women. This bar was not only aimed to um, do that, but also provide the additional calories it requires during pregnancy, and also price at a affordable range. Now the way we did this was, First, we observed. We observed the situation while we were sitting down in my friend's house discussing about you know, what product to come up with. We saw the slum areas, and we were like, okay, we could, we could work with that. And we embraced the situation, went down there, and we started to talk to them about what hardships they were going through, what they wanted to see, what change they wanted to see, what things they felt was difficult for them. and. Through our own R&D, through our own, through our own consultation with doctors, we sifted through a bunch of suggestions that they have given and the ideas we have come up with and produced. But here in in design and innovation, we have used these perspectives and really put it into empathy, right? So empathy here is when we actually went down there and spoke to them, to give them suggestions, and then after that we created the merch bar. Now through art, I've been able to um, look at various perspectives and apply this. And so, I encourage you guys to do the same. When you guys are bored, I want you to maybe take a pen and draw something, or write something down, or get a canvas and throw a bunch of paint on it, or even just look at a piece of work and try to unravel the hidden mystery behind it. Try to let your imagination run wild, and it'll take you places. So at the end, I encourage you guys to have an open mind. I encourage you guys to look at things with different lenses. And I encourage you guys to look at the whole element. Thank you.